Hi everyone, welcome back to today's video. For today, I'm gonna to be talking to you all about our new Brusho Crystal Color and um, talking to you about the different techniques, how you can use it, and then we're gonna create a really simple project together showing you how you can use it for some fun watercoloring techniques on a card. Um, so before we get into the project for today, I really just wanted to talk to you about the Brusho product and walk you through um, a couple of my favorite ways to use it and just get you a little bit more familiar. Before Stampin' Up! Carried It, I had heard of Brusho before, but I didn't have much experience with it or know how to use it really. So it's definitely been a learning curve for myself. Um, and I just wanted to kind of share some of the stuff that I found out with you guys. And like I said, some of my favorite techniques. Um, I am by no means an expert. <laughs> um, really, I have just been playing with it. And that's my number one tip if you get this, is play with it and see, see what you like, see how it performs for you, uh, see what you don't like, and just really play with it. I mean, there is, you'll see when I open that, this up, um, the containers of color, there's lots of product in each of these. They're actually a really good um, bang for your buck because they're gonna last quite some time. So feel free to play with them and uh, just have some fun and experiment and see what you come up, what you can come up with. Um, so the pack that we currently have has five different colors in it and um, I like to keep mine in the little box that they come in and I'll talk about that in just a second but there are five different colors um, we have they all have their own little names but basically we have a yellow blue red orange and a green color um, and they all they some of them have a couple that have different names but those are the colors that we have and they come in these little pots and when you get them, you'll see mine all have a piece of tape over them. When you get them, there's no hole in the lid. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to take something like your piercing tool and just pierce a hole through the top. And that allows you to let the product out. So essentially, I actually have this lid open. Essentially what the Brusho product is, is just a bunch of colored crystals that when um, you mix them with water, they act just like a watercolor. So you can see I've played a ton with the red, especially that's the one that I've been messing with the most. And you can see like there's a ton of product in here still. So when I say you have enough to really play with it, you really do. Um, but they don't come with a little hole in the top. So you do have to pierce the hole in the top. And um, some people just use a push pin and then leave the push pin in the hole so that nothing comes out. I myself like to take just a piece of tape um, this happens to be washi tape. All of the others just have regular scotch tape on them that I put on my pants to get some of the stickiness away and then I put on top. And um, I like using the tape because I can keep them all in this little box and I have a little place that they go. Um, but I know that the push pins work really, really well for some people, especially if you get different colored push pins, you can really easily see which one you have and just grab it and it works really well. But that's, this is how I store mine. And like I said, the only thing you have to do when you get them home is put a little hole in the lid so that you can get the product out. Um, they do have this band on them that you have to release to open the lid like I just did with the red one. Um, the red one is the only one that I have open because I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to do with it when I first got it. I'll be completely honest. So I opened it and you don't really have to do that. Um, you absolutely can, but you don't have to. So that's what you get in the box if you order the set from us. Now, how to use them, what to do with them, the different techniques. So I myself um, have played with them for a few days. Um, I've done lots of different samples. I'll show you some of the stuff that I've come up with here in a minute. Um, and then, like I said, we're gonna make a project together, but I've definitely played with them enough to know kind of the things that I like and the techniques that I prefer. My two favorite application methods are using our aqua painter and our spritzers. Um, so this spritzer here, I just have filled with water. And then my aqua painter, I obviously have filled with water as well. And these are my two favorite tools to play or to use brush with. And I'll show you the difference in the two. Um, so I'll show you the two techniques with the spritzer first. Um, so you can either apply the spritzer down onto your watercolor paper and then apply the brush -out, or you can apply the brush -out powder and then do the spritzer. My favorite technique is applying the brush -out first and then doing the spritzer. I just think it gives you a fun, um, I don't know, kind of like splatter paintry look and that's this one. And then this is if you put the water down first and then put the brush out. And I think that gives you kind of like a tie dye effect, which is really, really cool. Um, I actually made both of these using that technique and 
if you put enough water down, the colors just separate and it really makes that like tie dye look all on its own. And it's really, really cool and fun technique. You can see um, that the colors kind of start to blend together and you get those mixes. So it's really, really fun. I love using the spritzers with the brush out. It's probably between the aqua painter and the spritzer. I think I like the spritzer better for um, like a really fun technique. The aqua painter I use if I want um, more of a classic watercolor look, which you'll see in a second. But those are the two different ways that I use my brush show with the spritzer. I think they're both really fun and um, they have their own different look to them and I really, really like them. So like I said, brush show and then spritz it is probably my favorite technique because it's just fun, but both are really, really great. Moving into using the aqua painter. So along the same lines, I did um, two different techniques. I did one where I laid water down with the aqua painter and then put the brush on top. And that's what you get here. Um, I think with doing that method and the reason that you get a look like this is because you're not putting as much water down or I didn't put as much water down at one time. So this is kind of the look that I got. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's fun and it's different and it's, you know, it's its own thing. Um, but this is probably not my favorite. For a more um, traditional watercolor look, like I was saying, if you put the brush o down and then take your aqua painter and paint over it, you get something that looks like this. And I think this really shows the magic of the, this brush o product. These colors are so vibrant and so pigmented. It is unbelievable. Um, when I when we make our card together, you'll see how little product you need to get a pigment on your paper. Um, so this I just did to kind of showcase using the brush show and then going over it with a watercolor or with a aqua painter. But I also wanted you guys to see what the colors actually look like when they're on paper. So this is the green red, yellow, orange, and blue, and they're so pretty and so pigmented. It's just unbelievable. Really, really like them. Um, and like I said, I, I like this look for more of a traditional watercolor look. Um, it's really, really pretty, it's really fun, and there's a lots of fun stuff you can do with these. So that's just kind of my little brief um, spiel on the brush show. I just wanted you guys to have an idea of how you can use the product and um, my favorite techniques before we get into actually doing a project together. Um, if you're like me, this is a completely brand new product, so having a little bit of background information and knowing some of the fun tips and tricks to play with, or how to play with it, I think really does help. Um, so hopefully you guys found that useful. If not, hopefully I didn't bore you too much and you're still watching. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so to get into today's project, let me actually fish out my uh, sample. So I'm going to be making this really cute, simple birthday card. You guys saw in my last video, I made a birthday card. I'm like on a birthday card kick, I guess. I don't really know. Um, so I'm gonna be making this card and it's really pretty, it's really easy. This actually reminds me of a card I made, I think it was around this time last year and I did a watercolor brush at the on the back and I used a falling, I think it was the falling petals, I think was the name of that um, emb uh, embossing folder. And then um, I had a little sentiment, it was pink. Very, very similar. This one, I just, I love this look. It's just my thing, I guess, I don't know. I just think it looks really, really pretty and I loved using the brush in the background. Um, I don't know if you would believe me when I said, when I say this color pink that I got was from this red color, just very, very diluted. Um, so when I'm saying to you that you don't need very much product to get a nice color, you'll see that in a second because it's true. I went through, here, I'll just show you guys. When I actually posted a picture on Instagram the other day, I went through tons of different tests to see what I liked the best before I decided on this one. And actually, not to ramble on, but I'm showing you this. Um, this is actually a tech, or this is a piece that I used two of the different techniques in one. So I did the wash in the back with the aqua painter. And then while my paper was still wet, I sprinkled some of the brush on and that gave the splattered effect. I think it's pretty, but I think it took away from the sequence that I used to emboss it. So I decided not to go with that one. But that's just kind of an example of how you can take the different techniques and build and um, meld them together. So to create this card, let me just run through what we're going to be using today. Um, 
Today we are gonna be using the Happiest of Days stamp set. So this stamp set is actually in our annual catalog. I love this birthday wishes sentiment and I just really needed a card that I could use that on. So this is what I came up with. So we're gonna be using that stamp set for paper. Let me grab everything. I pushed everything off to the side so that I could show you guys those samples of the brush out and didn't really think about the, the repercussions. Um, so for our paper, we're gonna be using a pink pirouette, basic gray, and just some watercolor paper. So for our watercolor paper, you're gonna need two pieces. This one is cut at five inches by three and three quarters. And then the smaller piece is cut at three and a half by one and three quarters. Then we have our basic gray, and this one is cut at five and a quarter by four inches. And then this one is cut at three and three quarters by two inches. And then I just have our standard size card base, eight and a half by five and a half in pink pirouette. Um, we're also gonna be using our falling sequin. I think it's called falling sequins. Oh, I could be wrong. I don't think I am. But we're gonna be using our new sequin um, a textured impression embossing folder. This is one of the thick ones. So it gives a really, really nice deep impression in your paper, which is especially nice because we're using it with watercolor paper, which is a little bit thicker. So it's been known to be a little harder to emboss with. So using one of the thicker folders really, really helps. And then the last couple of things we're gonna be using just our basic black ink pad and then the glitter um, uh, epoxy shapes which I use this in uh, Tuesday's card as well. We use the clear ones. We're gonna be using the sparkly ones for today. So that's everything we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and jump into this project. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the water coloring for this card. Super, super, super simple, I promise. Um, and it's really, really fun to use the brush out just as a different technique. So what I'm going to do is just take the red, this is the brilliant red, and I just, take this little piece off. Usually I kind of leave it like half hanging on and I just peel it off enough to open up the little hole. Um, so this stuff is super pigmented. So as you can see in my sample, I'm going for a nice pink color. I don't want a bright red. So what that means is I have to be very, very careful with how much of this that I'm putting on to the watercolor paper. Um, so I actually think that might be a little too much. So let me... Like you can see there's hardly anything on here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just take my aqua painter and make sure I have lots of water in here. For this technique, you wanna make sure you have lots of water in your brush. And then I'm just going to take it and I'm gonna start dragging the color up and down the paper, picking up those crystals that I put down. And you can see that we get a nice little watercolor wash on our piece. Super cute, super pretty. So I actually really like that color of pink, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. Um, what I am going to do is I'm gonna take my spritzer, and because we're gonna run it through that uh, thick embossing folder, I'm just gonna spritz the back of it to make sure it's nice and wet, and the fibers are really kind of starting to break down in the paper um, so that I get a nice, deep impression and um, some nice, good texture on this paper. Actually, let me kind of blot it off a little bit on the back. I think I put a little too much water back there, but no big deal. So now I'm gonna take this and see how simple that was? It's so stinking easy, I'm telling you. So I'm gonna take my impression, or my uh, embossing folder, <laughs> and I'm gonna put this pretty close to the top. Um, I don't like putting it at the bottom because you, I don't, you don't get that like falling effect. So I'm gonna put it pretty close to the top I need to bring in my big shot. And we're gonna put it to tab one. I still have the old big shot where this is the platform that we have, so don't mind me. And then we're gonna put a cutting plate down. And then I'm gonna stick my embossing folder on top. I'm actually gonna move this closer to me. And run it through just like that. I'm actually gonna run it back just to make sure I get a really, really nice impression. And ta-da! Oh, move that big boy out of the way. So there is our watercolor piece, super cute. And I mean, you guys saw, I used like 
two or three crystals from the red to get this nice pretty pink color. So you don't need much at all and you get a really, really, really pretty effect. So I'm gonna put this off to the side, just let it dry for a minute. It's probably not gonna completely dry before um, I'm gonna go to assemble the card, which is okay. Um, I would probably let it dry a little bit longer, but just for video sake, we're gonna go ahead and assemble it when we're ready to go. Um, Next, we need to go ahead and stamp our sentiment. So let's grab this and let's grab our basic black and ink it up and do, 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 do. I'm going to take a baby wipe and just wipe off the little edge that I did because I've been horrible lately at <laughs> not rocking my stamp. Oh, I've been so bad. So I need to wipe that off a little bit. And then, sorry if you can see my big old head, but I'm just trying to center this on here and stamp her down. And there we go, super cute. I'm just gonna flip this over because I have it right here. I'm just gonna use some regular old snail adhesive. And then we're gonna take our smaller piece of a basic gray and stick that down. Just like that. And then I'm gonna bring in my watercolor piece. Like I said, it's still a little damp, but I'm gonna go ahead and mount it and finish up the card. So I'm gonna use Fast Fuse for this and I'm gonna adhere it down to the bigger piece of basic gray that we have. Don't forget to, ooh, now it's stuck to my desk. Don't forget to check your uh, fast fuse or it won't come off like mine just did. And I use quite a bit of fast fuse because it's watercolor paper and it has a tendency when it dries to start to curl and you don't want that. Let me rub that off my desk really fast. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this on here just like so. So stinking cute. And I'm gonna go ahead and mount this up on my card base. So let's just fold this in half. And again, I'm gonna use Fast Fuse because this whole piece has is now part of the watercolor piece, so it does have a tendency to kind of stick together. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're gonna put this on here. Then we're gonna take our little sentiment and flip that over, grab some dimensionals. And we'll stick this guy down, maybe. <laughs> I always have the hardest time getting the backs off of the dimensionals and I don't know why. Okay, then we're just gonna put this right in the center, just like that. Now, I think this is an absolutely beautiful card as is. The way that we can take it from beautiful to like extra beautiful and extraordinary is to grab our little um, enamel glitter dots. And I'm just gonna take a couple of the smaller size of these and I'm gonna put them right in the middle of some of the sequins from the um, embossing folder. I just think it adds a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of glitz and fun. So, just like, whoops. Man, I don't want it to stick to my desk. Come on, little dot. There we go. Let me grab a couple more. And I'm just kind of placing them randomly where I feel like I need a little extra something something. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's whatever you feel looks the best. And I think I'm gonna be good with that. I think that works for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's project. Hopefully you guys got a little bit more information for those of you that aren't really sure what brush is. Hopefully you have a little bit more information and um, 
feel like you can go and play with it and have some fun, use some of the techniques that I showed you, and um, just really experiment with it and see what you can come up with. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's project. As always, you can purchase any of these products 24 seven just by going to littlemooncreation.stampinup.net and click shop now. Um, if you have any questions about anything, um, if you still don't have an occasions catalog, you can either um, use my website and use, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a, a tickle in my throat, a frog in my throat. Um, you can use either my website and just use the contact me form, or you can send me an email at littlemooncreation at gmail.com and I'll get one sent right over to you, no cost to you. And um, I still have my paper share going. So if you are interested in getting every single piece or a sample of every single piece of designer series paper in the new catalogs, um, make sure you go and sign up for that. It's only gonna be up for a couple more days. It's a super great value. So if you want in on that, make sure you hurry and go do that right now ASAP. Um, but anyways, other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's project and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.